What's up everyone? Welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this Scratch tutorial, we're going to be making a complete projectile simulator. Let's get coding. Just finished coding. Yay! Now once you open um, Scratch 3 in scratch.mit.edu, the first place to start off is actually knowing what a projectile motion actually is. And a projectile motion is the motion, let's say a ball follows when you throw it across open earth. So it follows a curve-like motion, and that is what we call a projectile. And that is what we will be attempting to simulate in our video, and we'll simulate each and every bit of the projectile motion. A good place to start is to first initialize the variables. And uh, the first variable that comes to my mind is the gravity. And uh, we're gonna be making all the variables to be uh, in the user customizable mode so that the user can actually customize the variables himself to see uh, different effects um, um, of various natural phenomena on his uh, projectile motion. So first set up the new variable I'm gonna call gravity. And now what you wanna do is to double click on this rectangular box twice. Okay, so that's once and that's twice. And you should see a scroller like bar um, appear. So this would actually enable the user to customize gravity himself. And the values um, it seemed to take is only between one and 100. However, I mean, for gravity, I think that's more than enough uh, for our program. So we wouldn't need something bigger than that. All right, the next variable we wanna um, let the user customize is the initial um, takeoff speed, or I'm just gonna call it the initial velocity, okay? And again, do the same thing you did for gravity, um, double click it twice. I'm going to um, just drag and drop it right next to gravity so that it forms a nice little um, a nice little rectangular shape there on the top of the screen. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do is we will have a lot more variables, so we'll get back to that later on. We'll delete the cat sprite and then we'll proceed to draw a gun. So click paint a new sprite and I'm going to fill it with black. So just make the brightness um, zero and you should have a nice black color. Choose this um, rectangular drawbar and I'm just going to put a nice little rectangle right there. Center it as best as you can and I think this will do. I'm actually going to uh, set the size to be equals to 70 so that this thing looks a little more screen fitting if you might call it. Okay, I'm going to rename the sprite gun. You could rename it anything you want. This is going to be the sprite that basically shoots the ball like a bullet and the ball follows a projectile motion after that. Okay, so now we've named gun and um, what we want it to do is to go to the bottom left corner initially. Okay, so I'm going to enable the user to rotate um, about 90 degrees so he can move Kind of like this if you follow my mouse um, I hope you get uh, what I'm saying so in order for that to happen we need to um, just click the direction bar and you can see this direction is 90 and this direction is well uh, zero so we want it to be uh, able to move in the direction 90 to um, a 180 okay and we want it to be seen at all times so Here's what we need to do for that to happen. We need to actually move the thing. And um, let's just head over to the gun costumes and make sure it's a little bit smoother than this. I'm just gonna delete this um, sprite because it looks a little bit too awkward. And uh, actually draw a horizontal gun. This will actually make stuff easier for you. So draw a horizontal gun, sorry for that. Horizontal one would actually be simpler to understand. As you can see, the graphics of Scratch is like a bit poor, but that doesn't really matter for our program. Okay, so here, uh, when we click on direction, we can actually see the direction we want it to be able to move to is zero to um, 90. So in your uh, code, um, uh, head over to the events category and uh, put a when green flag is clicked. 
and uh, C point in direction 0 degrees okay and you should find uh, the point in direction in the motion category and we want to fill in 0 degrees so when you hit um, the green flag you can actually see the gun in a pretty nice straightforward upward position so we want to actually facilitate motion like I said only in that 90 degree space so first let's make the um, gun go to um, the left corner I'm just gonna give it space in order to uh, rotate completely okay this should do so um, grab your saved x and y coordinates and put it right after the point in direction Next, you want to grab a forever block from the control section and this is going to initialize the movements of the gun. So I'm going to have um, um, two cases if the left arrow is pressed and if the right arrow is pressed. Okay, I'm just going to duplicate the entire thing at one stretch to save a bit of time. So if um, the key left arrow is pressed, okay, then we want to actually check and make sure the direction is not more, or uh, I'm sorry, is not uh, equal to or less than zero. I'm just going to say it's not less than zero. So grab a not and an equal to from operators and then grab another if from control. So if, and now you can head over to motion and grab the direction bar right at the end. And if the direction is not equals to um, zero, I'm going to actually thought I put a greater or uh, lesser than sign. Anyway, um, change that to less than zero. Then what we want to do is to not initialize any movement at all if the direction is less than zero. And um, if it is equal to zero, then we'll allow it to move slightly in this direction. Um, but um, we don't really want that to happen. So what we need to do is to grab an or and say or direction is equal to zero okay direction is equal to zero and put this not right there so in case these conditions are um, not uh, true and we actually need to nest the ors within the not okay here we are all right that's a lot better so in case these two conditions are not true, then what we want to do is to actually initialize the moment, which is to turn, I'm just going to say three degrees in the anti-clockwise direction. So that's it. Now we're going to duplicate this exact block of code. Okay. And we're going to put it as, oops, this entire, these two nested ifs. And now I'm going to say if the key right arrow is pressed, okay. Then what we want to do is to make sure that the direction is not equals to or um, less than uh, or uh, greater than 90. Okay. So is not equal to or uh, 90 or is not less than 90. Okay. And you can do that by just moving the direction. And if those two conditions are not true, then I'm going to turn clockwise by three degrees. Let's test this out. So right arrow moves perfectly and left arrow moves nicely as well. Cool. This would actually um, be all of our gun movement. And um, a small thing I'm actually going to do is to just set up a message. That is, um, I'm going to head over to events and grab a when key space pressed. I'm going to say uh, broadcast shoot okay so this is the message our projectile is actually going to receive um when the user presses the space bar and when it broadcast shoot uh when we broadcast shoot the projectile uh, actually begins its motion okay we're done programming the gun and that would be roughly one fourth of our entire projectile simulator I'm not going to drag this tutorial too long. Um, I want to make it a bit concise and have a few more tutorials on this topic. So the next tutorial will be releasing, I believe, on Thursday. So you could check it out then. And um, in case you've made it this far, I highly recommend you please hit that like button because it boosts my rating on the YouTube algorithm at no cost to you. 
it just takes two seconds guys please just go out of full screen and slam it it's not too hard next thing i'm going to request you to do is to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified on our upcoming uploads including part two of this projectile simulator with that said thanks for watching everyone i'll see you all later bye bye